Jeremiah says, the same chapter 2, verse 33, how you adorned your way to seek love. How you adorned your way to seek love, indeed, to the greatest evils, have you accustomed yourself. Rashi, the holy sage from 900 years ago, says, what is Jeremiah talking about how we adorned ourselves to seek love and ended up acquiring the greatest evils? This is like an immodest woman, a putza, that beautifies herself to seek approval and companionship. That's how we've acted by seeking approval and companionship with the other nations and ended up adopting the worst of their practices. Rashi Kadosh talked about Ephraim Goldberg and all of his friends that are seeking approval and companionship from the church. You want to coexist? No problem. But to unite? There's no permission whatsoever. To invite them into our communities to speak? Even worse. Jeremiah the prophet says and also, for all of those that say, nah, come on, this is an exaggeration. This is this, this is that. nishpat Behold, I'm entering into judgment with you because you are saying I have not sinned. Now if you ask, if you ask, the very nice but biblically forbidden speaker, Pastor Bamrick. How is his relationship with Israel? He's going to tell you it's great. I don't know why you're ruining everything. Everything is working great. How great is it working? So great that he has a partnership with the Jewish Federation for at the very least seven, eight years. He has a partnership with a group of rabbis where they meet every single month. They had symposiums with over a hundred rabbis a couple of times. A Christian Judaic event with over uh, 2,000 attendees and a monthly meeting with different rabbis of course, some reform and conservative, but unfortunately also so-called orthodox rabbis that are meeting the pastor in a church among some synagogues too. It's forbidden for a Jew to attend a church. But Pastor Bemrick doesn't know this because his Jewish friends, the rabbis, apparently don't know it either. Bamrick is much more religious than the past than the rabbis that he knows. Now Ephraim is going to tell you, yeah, but we are not Haredi. We are Jews that are observing Allah. We have our Gdolim. We listen to them. And you perhaps have your opinion. You're entitled to your opinion. Even if you have sources, we disagree with your approach. We disagree with what you're saying. Well, I would respond to that, Ephraim and the rest of his followers. You're all lying to yourself. How are you lying to yourself? You're lying to yourself by saying that you you have gdolim, you have rabbis you listen to, because you don't listen to them. You know how I know you don't listen to them? Because your own rabbi, your own leader, Arab Herschel Shechter, Shichyeh, wrote about this an article called experimental judaism playing with fire rav shechter writes the following and i'll read it word for word and you tell me if ephraim and his supporters are following what their rabbi is saying it's very painful to see that there is missionary activity taking place in eretz israel the official Catholic response to the Zionist movement when it first began was that this dream will never be realized. They argued that Eretz Israel is the chosen land set aside for the chosen people 
and the Jews lost their special status as the chosen people when they rejected Jesus in his words Otoaish, that person the establishment of the Medina the country in 1948 clearly contradicted this claim to the church of the church to defend their position they explained meaning the missionaries explained that the Medina did not include the Makoma Mikdash the old city of Yerushalayim or Hebron meaning that all of the holy locations of ancient Eretz Israel and as such was not considered to be the chosen land immediately after the 1967 war when all of these ancient holy places were also under Jewish control the Pope proclaimed and every year since then all of the subsequent popes have made the same statement that Jerusalem should become an international city because Jewish control of the old city of Jerusalem is a glaring contradiction to the claim of the church that we have for forfeited our status as the Amanifcha, the chosen people the church would like control to be taken away from the Jews to defend its theological position the church feels that the missionary activities in Eretz Israel will ultimately lead to the Jews accepting Jesus and once again becoming the chosen people who rightfully rule over the Holy Land every so often newspapers quote non-Jewish ministers claiming that they have a convent uh, uh, covenantal connection with the Holy Land this is a repeat of their ideological principle that Eretz Israel is the chosen land for the chosen nation and that after the Jews rejected Jesus they meaning the Catholics became the chosen nation to whom God's covenant with Avraham, Yitzhak and Yaakov to give Eretz Israel to their descendants applies to how painful it is that some Orthodox rabbis also state that their brethren the Catholics have a covenantal connection to Eretz Israel these rabbis i.e Goldberg and the rest of his friends don't realize that by making such irresponsible statements they are playing into the hands of the Avodah Zarah idol worship these same rabbis pride themselves on educating thousands of Catholics every year in the mitzvot of the Torah the Chumash speaks of our accepting korbanot which is sacrifices from non-Jews in Leviticus chapter 22 verse 25 and the halacha speaks of non-Jews volunteering as in a no he's not obligated but he does to observe additional mitzvot over and above the very basic seven mitzvot required by all Noahites see the Mishnah Bura at the end of Siman 304 and Biur Al however these rabbis are fundamentally mistaken in their understanding of this Allah we may only accept a non-jew sacrifices in the holy temple when they are offered leshamayim for heaven as long as they believe in Jesus and are sacrificing to him this is outright avodah zarah idol worship and we may not allow these sacrifices to be brought on our mizbeach on our altar if a non-jew is convinced of monotheism and wears a talit and sits in a sukkah etc as in a no mitzuveveose we he's not obligated but he does this is commendable but if a non-jew still believes in Jesus and wears a talit and sits in a sukkah as a means of identifying with that Abu Dazara, this does not fall under the category of one volunteering mitzvot as he's not obligated and he does but is rather an act of deepening is committed to his avodah zarah woe unto those rabbis who are deepening and furthering avodah zarah commitments and practices years ago 
Rav Yosef Dov Slovichik warned both in his public addresses as well in his written essays against having any such contact with the church. How shameful it is that people who claim to be disciples of his have reinterpreted his words to mean the exact opposite of what they really say and have then added that even if at one time he did he did prohibit such interaction with the church this clearly no longer applies today to the best of my understanding the mashiach has not yet arrived and the world is still full of Abu Dazara. the early sages the Achunim, had a debate whether believing in a trinity constitutes Abu Dazara for a Noahide or not but for the Jews there is no question that it is Abu Dazara. and even for Abnei Noach Rav Slovechik quoted in the name of his grandfather Rav Chaim Slovechik that this understanding of the Ramah and the Shach was a shiga, uh, was a shkaga Shiatza milifne ashalit and it makes no sense to distinguish between a definition of Abu Dazara for the Jew or for the Ben Noach. In so many words, he's saying that the uh, the um, uh, Rav Slovechik said that there is no difference. Christianity, believing in the New Testament, believing in Jesus, is idolatry both for the Jew and the Gentile. The human desire to be a mechadesh, meaning a person that's a original thinker has misled these rabbis in Eretz Yisrael and unfortunately his own so-called student Ephraim Goldberg and his friends to play into the hands of Abu Dazara and Shmad and destruction the words of this week's parasha stand out clearly to teach us that in Eretz Yisrael we are required to be even more careful when dealing with the church Time and time again, the Torah warns us that in Eretz Yisrael, we must not get involved with Avodah Zara. Officially, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is the king over Eretz Yisrael. And the Midrashim refer to all of Eretz Yisrael as the palace of the king. The Ramban, in the end of Parashat Achremot, explains that the main location for observance of all of the mitzvot is Eretz Yisrael, and one who sins there is compared to one who rebels against the king's authority in his palace, which is a more brazen sin than sinning elsewhere. Apparently, the sanctity of Eretz Yisrael arouses strong feelings of spirituality that one must take care to channel properly. These strong feelings can mislead even the wise to get carried away by their imagination and their desire to be original thinkers and in turn to strengthen Abu Dazara and Shmad. Shmad is destruction. Some rabbis have gained credibility by claiming to be disciples of Rav Slovechik, i.e. Ephraim Goldberg, and then have proceeded to totally misinterpret his views on these issues of Abu Dazara and Shmad. These are the words of Perhaps the Gdola Dor in the modern Orthodox world of Herschel Schechter, written and published on Torah Web Foundation. You could find this online for free. It's called Experimental Judaism Playing with Fire. Now, if you ask Ephraim about the missionary, before today, Ephraim would tell you it's a perfectly fine, unifying event. If you ask his donors, they'll say it's a perfectly fine, unifying event. If you ask Rav Shechter, he'll tell you, look at the Shulchan Aruch. It's not perfect, and it's not a unifying event, but rather... It's forbidden according to our Torah to bring a Christian missionary into a synagogue, needless to say, to give him the stage to speak to Jews. Because one of those Jews could be enlightened and admire the speech pattern, admire the words, admire the body language, 
and even admired the look of this pastor and thereby want to continue this relationship and chas shalom can end up being someone that joins the church it's time for the church of jesus christ to arise no more walls of division and and we started doing things for israel and we had nights to honor israel with uh, dr john hagee and the lord laid on my heart it is time to unite with the jewish community in mass about four years ago we had our first christian jewish summit for israel with the deputy foreign minister congress people christians and jews united and the presence of one of the rabbis said there's a wind in this place there's a change of wind hallelujah and since then we started getting together with the rabbis we we had pastor rabbi torah studies and the rabbis are traditional rabbis and we have just embarked on a christian jewish institute of theological understanding on the holy spirit in the old testament it's time to get out of the box when everyone said i was crazy about what i did or tried to do and a kadosh baruch Hu did the whole thing several years ago when the matthew kelly event happened it didn't take very long to prove the point because a kadosh baruch Hu showed us what happened just a short period of time i believe it was a week or two after that so-called event with matthew kelly was supposed to happen every single house in the Montoya Circle, Boca Raton Synagogue neighborhood, got a missionary letter with a DVD in it. How do I know? I was there. I got one too. Every house got one. Every house got the follow-up package of an event that was canceled only a few days before it was supposed to take place. Meaning, the missionary was supposed to come to plant a seed in some way or another. Even if that's simply you liking the way he talks about nothing. But once you like the way he talks about nothing, that's when the venom really starts kicking in. Because then they start developing a relationship, putting you on a newsletter, on an email, on a mailing list. And what ended up happening, the whole community's mailing list was acquired one way or another. And every single member in that community that lived there at that time got in their mail missionary letters with a dvd of uh talking about israel and the church's relationship with israel and all types of other garbage idol worship the very same thing is happening right now people will like to fool themselves and that's why i say don't listen to me if you call yourself a jew that's observant of torah and mitzvot listen to what the shulchan aruch says Shulchan Aruch says, you attend that event, you support that event, you watch that event, you donate to the people that are hosting the event, you continue allowing Ephraim Goldberg and the rest of his staff to stay on their job, you are supporting idol worship, and thereby the full ramifications of the Shulchan Aruch should be expected upon your head. Don't cry to HaKadosh Baruch Hu when disaster comes. This is not a curse, Chas Shalom. My whole job, my whole livelihood, my whole attention is dedicated to help Jews from their own spiritual stupidity. But once you bring it on yourself once, that's my problem I try to help you with. Once you bring it on yourself twice, then it's your problem. Don't cry to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Don't cry to any rabbi. Don't cry to anyone because the Shulchan Aruch outright forbids every single thing that's happening in that community. From this moment on, every single second that Ephraim Goldberg stays in position, every second anybody that's on his staff that supported this event in the past and currently stays there is a sin on the entire Keilah. And every single one of you, do not cry to Hashem because HaKadosh Baruch Hu has had it with such garbage behavior. You're desecrating a Kadosh Baruch Hu's name and you're putting Jews' lives at risk by allowing missionaries to walk into your, into your uh, synagogues like it's a church. Shame on you. Shame on you for allowing such things to happen to put Jewish people's lives at risk. 
You have over half a million Jews have been converted to Christianity. Over 80% of the Jews in America are marrying Christians. Intermarriage is running rampant. Assimilation has become standard. Everybody cries about it as the so-called silent holocaust and you are promoting it. Yes, this makes us angry. And if it didn't, we should check our pulse because we will be spiritually dead just like all of the supporters that are part of this. You should be ashamed of yourself. Every single one of you that's not putting a stop to this, that's not firing Ephraim Goldberg from every single rabbinical position. He clearly has shown this is not a one-time mistake, but this is simply a behavioral pattern. This is his shita. This is his way. He is a danger to Am Israel much more than any missionary out there. As I said before, if Bamrick was a Jew, I would love to have him on our team because he's much more religious than many people that are supporting this event. Perhaps you sh people should learn some Torah instead of publicizing Abu Dazara. Be'ezat Hashem, this too will give each one of us the chizuk that we need to finally do tshuva and stop desecrating Hashem's name and putting his kids in danger. Kol tuv, b'cha You have to fight for the will of Hashem regardless. You have to fight for the honor of Hashem regardless. You have to fight for the truth regardless. Whether you have the time or you don't have the time. As long as you understand that this is the truth of the Kedosh Baruch Hu, and his name is being desecrated, you have to fight for the will of Hashem. As long as you understand that this is the truth of the Kedosh Baruch Hu, and his name is being desecrated, there is no room for leniency. When you fight for the sake of the Torah, when you fight for the honor of the Kedosh Baruch Hu, to protect his children, at the very least, you are achieving several things. One, you are showing the people that are looking for the truth, at least that there is truth out there available and what is happening out there is wrong. They're going to see that this is not a normal behavior. To bring a Christian, Catholic, missionary of any kind, to bring an idol worshiper of any kind, to speak to a group of Jewish people, is not okay according to the Torah. So by you screaming foul, by you crying out and warning people about this apparent danger, at the very least you're showing people that there is truth out there, what's happening out there is wrong. That's the first thing that you're achieving. The second thing that you're achieving is that you're bringing mercy to the world. 